Hi, Tony from All The Remote Things, back with you again. And today I've got my great friend, Sathpal Singh. How are you today? I'm really good, man. Really good to see you. It's been a while. It has been a while. So uh, Seth and I are, are, are old friends. I'll use the word old. Old friends from uh, <laughs> the beginning of COVID and all sorts of things. Um, Seth, well, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. You're happy to do that. Uh, so as you say, I'm Sathpal Singh. People call me Seth. Um, as you can tell from a dodgy Scottish accent, I'm Scottish, Scottish based, um, born in Edinburgh. I often, when I'm asked to introduce myself, I often say I sit at the intersection of engineering, agile and communities, because that's where my passions lie and most of the things pretty much come together for me in most of the work that I do. Uh, like many people, I started way back, long, long time ago in tech as a software engineer and basically just went from there and progressed through, you know, team lead roles, tech lead roles, in, uh, you know, managed managerial roles, and then more into strategic leadership, where I've kind of been the last 12 years or so. And as you know yourself, Tony, I've got a number of other um, passions in the voluntary space, in the global community, and a bunch of other stories you're going to go on to explore. Brilliant. And then that's, you know, some of those things you said there about the uh, the communities and, and the voluntary and being involved in the in the the agile uh, meetups and etc. That's you know I was really excited to get you on today. One of the reasons I reached out to you, notwithstanding the fact that I like to have a chat to you regularly, but <laughs> is that you you've just had a recent trip to to Agile America or Agile Twenty Two in Nashville, um, and I, I thought it would be really good to get your reflections on how that conference went. Seeing seeing as it was the first one back in, in, in all its uh, glory of people actually meeting again, how, how did it go? Mm, great question. Uh, Scotland, we like four-letter words quite a lot, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'd use the word epic. Yeah. It, was, it was epic, right? So, so I guess I was lucky because it was my second in-person conference that year. So uh, a couple of months prior to that, I'd gone down for Lean Agile London, which is an awesome conference down in London, as per the name. And, you know, there were lots of great old friends and people there from all over, the, the global community. I was just in a blast for three days. So I went into, you know, Agile 2022 with that, you know, that buzz. But, you know, it was on a different scale. That was the thing, right? Because the thing for me was, you know, we were going out there, well, firstly, Scott, well, Scott's ever right for the benefit of your audience, but you know which Scott I mean, right? My good friend Scott, he and I are, you know, great collaborators together. We were a bit shocked when we got the email coming through going, you know, you, basically, you know, you're coming to Nashville. And we're like, ah! So I, I basically got in touch with him. I said, we're going to Nashville. He said, what are you talking about? And I said, read your email, phone me back. So he went and we checked his phone me back. We're going to Nashville. And it was great. I, I mean, it's such an amazing conference scale of it. Uh, well, okay, I was double hatting. So, you know, I was like both a speaker and a purple t shirt, right? Mm. Which people who don't know is that, you know, that's the amazing volunteering team yep. who, you know, look after it all. And um, yeah, it's such a privilege to do both. But the venue's huge. So, in the, you know, the, the Gale and Oakbury and Nashville, and, you know, even getting around the place, you know, you, you need to have good footwear. Right. Uh, and again, you know, great sessions, five days. It's a long, it's a it's a long week. It was an emotional roller coaster, right? And again, I met a lot of my major heroes, you know, so to get time with Dana Larson and you know, hang with Esther and you know, catch up with Lisa. It was yeah, it was mind blowing to be honest. Um it, it was fantastic. Yeah. All of which we've had on the cast as well. So shout out to all of them. Yeah, of course you are. And Scott, and Scott as well. Of course, we had Scott on here as well, your, your partner in crime. Now, I saw lots of, I, in the size of the venue, we're digressing, but I, I saw lots of uh, messages from, from friends as it was going on about people getting lost. Um, so, yeah, did you make it in time and all those sorts of things? So. Oh, don't, oh, don't. Uh, that, 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 how, I mean, I, I think if I, if I get into the details of that, it will consume the... The, the, the totality of this conversation because there's many good friends of mine you know, and you probably saw it some of it on Facebook as well I had a horrendous travelling experience oh yes yeah yeah you let's just say yeah. you, your, your flight didn't go as well as it should that's what we're... well 
<laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll summarise it as United somehow managed to screw up every single one of my flights. <laughs> so I basically left Edinburgh late, uh, and then got into DC because I went via Dulles, got stranded in Dulles, and then had to be put up overnight. Was late to the conference. Thankfully, my session wasn't till day two. And then on the way back, I got stuck again in uh, in Nashville. Although I was lucky enough to have a wonderful lunch with Diana, so that that more than made up for it. Um, and then I basically got stuck in Chicago. Well, on the way home, there's worse places in the world you could have ended up. You know, so <laughs> I agree. I agree. So it, it, it's interesting, you talked about your session, so that was one of the reasons I, I really reached out to you was because, you know, obviously you, you, you've gone to such a great conference, but you were doing a fantastic world cafe on, you know, make, making communities work in a hybrid world. So I'm really interested to hear how, A, how it went because you, you ran it, ran it to, at the conference and then B, we'll talk about a little bit about the outcomes and, and the themes and things that you, you, you heard from all of that. Oh, good, good, good show. Um, yeah, it was brilliant. So we did it on day two. As you say, it was basically to explore, you know, the challenges of creating, you know, communities that really thrive across like global enterprises. You know, you're all about, you know, remote as, as per your, your podcast. And that's a challenging thing to do. And Scott and I are big fans of the World Cafe type, you know, event, that, that, that construct. And the reason I like it uh, in fact, I'm doing a lot more of it in my work now I'm taking in. So I work in, you know, in the, in the UK financial services sector. And again, large, complex global enterprises, uh, lots of traditional silos and all the rest of it. And the World Cafe is an amazing way to bring people together to have powerful exploratory conversations, right? So what we did is we would come up with a bunch of questions just to seed the, you know, the conversation. I think we had about 35 folks showed up. So a really nice number. For a workshop, right? Uh, so that was really cool, and they were really engaged. And, you know, we set out the questions across the tables, and the whole point is it's a democratic piece, right? So people just wander around. You know, they look at the questions and decide what, what interests them. They take a seat, right? And it, that's really the whole analogy. If you just walked into, you know, a random cafe and sat down with some strangers at a table, you'd probably have some bloody good conversations, right? And that's what it is. And, and it, it, you know, it surfaces great insights, you learn from one another. And the point of it is, you know, you are giving everyone a voice. So, you know, if, if it's facilitated well, the conversation at the table, but everybody gets a chance to input and, and you will learn amazing amounts of things from each other. And then you repeat it a number of times. You get up and physically wander to the table. And it was great. We had a lot of fun. We played music. Scott was dancing. You know, he was in his skill. And, We'd be out of the last. No, no, no. That's, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the best to happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, look, so that, that sounds really interesting. And, and as we were talking previously, you know, I, I wanted to pick into some of the insights because, you know, the hybrid mm. thing, the hybrid thing. So we all know how much organisations struggle with and are struggling with now, right, moving into just complete remote. But then add in hybrid, a mix of, you know, we're here and we're there, and we know that organisations are, you know, grappling with that now. So I'm really interested to hear some of the insights. What I will do mm -hmm. is I'll preface here, well, I'll preface here talking to Seth, is that keep your eye out because there's going to be a book around this. So now I've said it on air, it's going to have to happen, Seth. Right. Really? Say thanks for that. <laughs> so you're, so we're getting a sneak preview here. So, so, you know, an exclusive first on all the remote things. No, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, you've definitely laid down the gauntlet now. But uh, yeah, there, there, there is plans to. So Scott and I have been in this space for a good few years, but you know, much like yourself, I think the last two and a half, three years, you know, when COVID got serious and we all basically pivoted to this, you know, dispersed way of working and then trying to build remote teams completely in their totality, and then going back to hybrid model. You know, I think for me, and I spoke about this and other podcasts I spoke about in other panel discussions is the, the complexity around how you have effective collaboration right and also how you have effective communication and you know I've written about this stuff you I think you've seen my my piece on InfoQ that I did and you know your, your good friend Phil you know he commented very positively around some of the stuff that I touched on there 
but I think these challenges persist, right? So for me, I think it's made us think a lot more around, well, how do we have effective meetings? And prior to COVID, when you know, people got into a room together and there was less of a focus on, you know, meeting etiquette and you know, even team charters when you're getting together the team. And I think all of that came back to the fore and you know, gained focus. And I think it's been really good for us, frankly. I think it's been a positive byproduct because it's making us think a lot more about. But is that an effective way to communicate? You know, it's like you're on a meeting and you've got some people physically in the room and you've got some people like, you know, on the end of a call. And obviously they're not, you know, they're not on a sort of, you know, spider phone where it's, you know, it was just audio. They're on like, you know, like on a screen. But if you don't facilitate the meeting well, what happens? The guys on the, you know, on the end of the call on the screen, they kind of get excluded, right? Exactly. <laughs> They get excluded and they're not part of the conversation. Yeah. So I think it's it's made us all think more about effective meeting facilitation. Yeah, I, I agree. And I'm, I'm on record, and you know, anybody who's watched a few of these castle guys, he's gonna say it again, well, I am. I don't like the word hybrid, right? And and it, my my feeling around it when you facilitate is that if anybody's not in the room and they're on a screen, then you're remote and you should facilitate it in a remote mode and thinking about how you have that interaction between the remote here or the remote there. And exactly what you said, I absolutely agree with you. You can't, you, you, you have to do that otherwise and facilitate it well, or people are just not going to go well. And they're going to be disengaged. Correct. And that's the thing, right? It's how do you build effective engagement? Meetings are hard enough as they are, right? Yeah. And most of, most of us are drowning in them. I mean, my old calendar at work, it's, it's full, you know, like, Sometimes quadruple booked, and I'm not going to make a choice. So which which of these meetings am I going to? When I go to a meeting, you know, I want to see agendas. I want to know why I'm there. I, I want to meaningfully engage. And a bit like some of the stuff that I think Elon Musk had advocated at Tesla, right? You got a meeting, it's because you feel like you can add value, and you're going to get value from going. If neither of those two boxes are ticked, it's not the meeting for you. <laughs> no, exactly right. So, 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 what are some of the trends that came out of that World Cafe? Give me a little bit of a, a, a tip of, of, of the thoughts that came out that people. Obviously, there would have been things that people were struggling with that would have come out, and then mm. some some of the things that people were saying about how you how you resolve some of those. Interested to hear. So, uh, I, I don't think many solutions as such came out, and I think that probably says it all, right? And yeah, I think yeah. because I think we we don't have all the answers, and I think that's one of the hypotheses that Scott and I are regularly testing. And I think when we, you know, eventually get to this book, that's some of the things we are going to be, you know, trying to, you know, uh, tease out and, and share with people. But I think, yeah, communication remains hard. I think one of the things for me, and again, it's, it's a topic close to my heart, is inclusivity, right? So I think, you know, if, if you're going to do this stuff, how do you make sure that it, you know, it suitably works for different cultures? So most of us work in you know, diverse teams, geographically dispersed, but also there are cultural differences, right? Yeah. So that that dev, that came up, uh, and again, I would expect that to come up. Um, obviously, there was a lot of talk about psychological safety. One of my real pet hates is <laughs> you go into a space and somebody, somebody verbally just says, this is a safe space. And I hate that because as soon as they do that, it's like, well, is it? Why do you feel the need to call it out? right it's only a safe space if people feel like it's a safe space yeah. and it will either feel like one or it won't you saying it doesn't make any difference and the fact that you say it i think is is almost counter to that in my own view and opinion it's a bit like you know you and i have a call when i go tony you, you you can trust me man you could totally trust me as soon as i say that you're probably not going to trust me right <laughs> <laughs> you've left right you've gone <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does that make sense? You see what I'm saying? No, it makes absolute sense to me, and I, and I think you know, you, you demonstrate that space by the the, the atmosphere and the yes, you know, it's, it's an ecosystem. It's its own little ecosystem, right? And then you you demonstrate that by how you facilitate it, how you how you um, allow people to act and 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 talk within the conversation, making sure that it works that way. You don't have to come out and just go, "It's a safe space," because like you said, well, one or two things as you said, people are going to leave. Or people are going, they're on edge. They go, oh, I don't want to say anything because it's a safe space. I better not say anything, right? So, but it's, it's, 
It's just making sure that, that, that you, you set it up in a way that's equitable to people to allow them to, to function in, in that mode. So just before we move on, one of the things that I come back to repeatedly, so I do a bunch of stuff I have done over the last few years with my good friend April Jefferson. Yeah? Oh, yeah, love so that. April, sadly, cast, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so sadly April wasn't in Nashville because I was really looking forward to seeing that was message. I'm going to see she was on. I'm not coming. I'm not going to make it. I was, I was, I was devastated. I'm not going to lie to you. But when I've done stuff with um, April, and April asked me to co-host uh, one of her global opening spaces and her open oh, yeah, space yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. She does an incredible job of, you know, creating this space and this vibe, and you feel like you belong, right? So a lot of this of belonging, you know, I'm sure we might touch on that in terms of community, because that's a lot of what I'm interested in, and you create a sense of belonging, but it feels like a safe space. It operates like one. And the vibe is such, right? And then people share, they open up. And it's a safe space, but at no point does she sit there and go, right, it's in a safe space here. She does it through the way she creates the atmosphere, yeah. right? Uh, world cafes, I think, are the same. Um, you know, if you're doing, you know, fish bowls or any of these things which are derived from your liberating structures and you're using them really to... Because these things are there to... You know, I guess they are exemplars of great interaction pattern. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good segue because, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk, talk to you about also, just sort of stepping away from that now, but, but it's the same thing, right? Um, you've got a wonderful uh, community, the Agile community, the Future of Work Scotland that you've set up. And, mm. and I say that because I, I was invited to, to be involved in it and the, the welcoming space, um, is exactly what I experienced prior to actually being there on the, the particular, albeit through screens. <laughs> but it, I could see the vibe and the, and the feel of that. So talk to me a little bit about that particular community because it's a really great community. If people don't know about it, they should. No, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some info for you to cheer at the end. Um, no, no, it was great. It was great to have you on. And I think, well, I think, when you came on, that that was at the real height of the pandemic, right? Absolutely. It's great to have you on talking about what you were doing with Remote AF, right? Uh, and I think the point, like you said, is we pivoted to the virtual um, model very quickly, quite early on, probably before a bunch of other meetups did, because we did the, you know, we did all the things that everybody else did. It was a local, you know, Edinburgh-based you know, community. So you only came along if you, you know you were you were, you were close to Edinburgh. And then obviously COVID happened, you know, we had a, an event planned with my good friend Martin Henshelwood, you know, he's active in the, in the Scrum community, a lot of people know him, he's, he's a great, he's a great PST and trainer, I've uh, been on a few of his courses, um, and he was due to do a talk with us and it was going to be in a physical space, we cancelled the venue, you know, cancelled the catering and pivoted to, to do it online, it went really well and we took it from there, but over 2020 when you you joined us as well in one of our sessions it was a fantastic session um we did a weekly series but the point of that was we'd realized that you know we we're all experiencing these lockdowns and we we're all stuck in our homes right so for donald and i don't my co-organizer it it was all about keeping the conversations going you know keeping the dialogue going keeping the connections right and a lot of us, you know, the past, my passion for, for that particular meetup is really we are introducing new bodies of learning to our community and most of them would likely be aware of, of, of this particular subject matter or topic. And we're giving the speakers a platform and, you know, amazing, you know, um, speakers like yourself um, are doing great work out there and... A, we want to give you a platform and, and you're all very generous with your time and come along and, and share your insights. And if one person leaves an event like that and learns something, that's a success. Yeah, that is exactly right. It is exactly yeah, right. So it casts exactly the same method of, on these casts. If one person watches this and takes something away, that's the intent of it. And I think, you know, to your, to your earlier point about welcome, et cetera, just quickly is, I guess a lot of it, I guess a meetup and event will feel the way based on the personalities of the hosts, right? Yeah. So I'm the host of, of these events, right? And I have a certain personality. And I guess it comes back to sort of the authenticity, right? I'm the first to say I'm not everyone's cup of tea, right? 
<laughs> the way I conduct myself, and you know, I'm, I'm chatty, I'm lively, I'm uber extrovert, right? But that's how I run and host my events, right? If you come along, you'll be well welcomed, you know, everyone means everyone, right? And, and Scott and I often talk about that a lot. It's a big motivator for us in the global community space. But we have, we've got people who come from all over the world. And when we first did that weekly series, we had people from like places we couldn't imagine, right? We had people from Johannesburg, you know, they came across quite regularly for a while. We once had some chappy join us from Lebanon and we couldn't for the life, yeah, we couldn't for the life of us understand how that individual had even become aware of the group. Wow. You know, you, you can tell when you've got a community that's vibrant when it starts to reach out like that. And, you know, my, my hat's off. Like I said, I I really enjoyed it. And it was just that that, that welcoming vibe that, that got it going. And as a speaker, when you get that, it makes you, 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 you you're already tense because you know you're going to be talking to a bunch of people, right? And then you have that, you have that, that sort of cradle there that, that sort of says, oh, okay, yeah, this is good. This is going to be fun. So it's, it is good fun. So I'm just going to, I'm going to walk a little bit further to the right and go, you've started your own podcast as well. You know, you know, competition here. No, no, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> talk to me about, you know, talk to me about what the pod- podcast is about and, 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 and why you got it started. Uh, good, good, good one. Um, well, can I just say before we go any further, there's no competition because yours is awesome and uh-huh. you're in an operating rhythm. And Scott uh-huh. and I took a break from it, right? We took a break from it. Um, and at the moment, it's kind of parked. But yes, you're right. We started a podcast, making community. And as you can imagine, it is all about sharing our passion for community, but also encouraging other amazing global community builders to come along yeah. and share their stories of how their communities got started. Uh, and um, yeah, we, we did about four episodes, maybe. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not gone. It's still there. It's a project. You know, we, we both co-founded it. But it actually came about almost by accident, right? So we were on a... I'm trying to think where it would have been. I think it was an Access Agile. So after we did Agile to yes. Reflect, that kind of emerged into Access Agile. I was on there and I was literally about to do a talk. Scott was hosting me. And before we started the talk, we were just chatting away, as we often do. You, you know, you've been part of these conversations with us. And we're blethering away, you know. Yeah, a couple of daft days, you know, uh, as we often are in Scotland doing the thing. And our good friend Mao was there, right? Mao was based in Mexico, and he, you know, he's done a bunch of stuff with us. And he was just sitting there listening and laughing at, you know, us carrying on. And he's like, you two have, like, you know, this natural, you know, um, dynamic, you know, the way you converse and the way you bounce off each other and chat and he goes, I think it would make a really good podcast. And we're just looking at each other, looking at him, we're like, hmm, that's an interesting idea. And he already did a bit of um, producing. So he had a different podcast. So he was already doing that and knew the, knew the ropes. And we're like, why don't we give it a go? So it was basically an experiment. Um, so we got off the ground Got some really nice feedback early on. So, you know, we're going to come back to build up an autumn rhythm. Uh, like, you know, masters like yourself, you know. How I many are you done now? Well, if, uh, if you're talking about my previous podcast, The Agile Revolution, that's about 200 oh. episodes. And, you know, on this particular cast, I think we're up to about 52 and been in a, in a year. So, yeah, yeah, done, done a couple. But um, I've, I've heard you look <laughs> great, mate. So, you know, while we're saying stuff, they are really good. Take, a, take an opportunity to have a listen to them. Yeah, no, we're, we're definitely going to get it resurfaced. And again, it was part of the motivation for the book project, right? So yeah. lots of stuff that Scott and I have learned doing this stuff, practicing this stuff, Brilliant. engaging and collaborating with other, you know, great community builders across the globe. And, you know, we had some amazing people on, you know, we had um, Alex Barker come on and she does a lot of stuff in the pirate space. And she's also been the past speaker at Future Work Scotland. And she's done amazing stuff, you know, to create these communities and, you know yourself, right? The beauty of communities is they are thriving spaces of, you know, human interaction. And that's the stuff I'm, I'm doing in my, my day job, you know, and I build a lot of stuff across, you know, large global engineering communities. And yeah, you, there are always challenges, and but you've got to be open to experimentation and you've got to find, you know, new innovative ways to bring people together and, and create, you know, the kind of level of engagement. Back to your earlier point about, 
talked about safe spaces and all this good stuff. Um, it's just an amazing space to be playing. And, you know, at the heart of it all, we're human, right? Yeah. First and, for, first and foremost, we're human beings. Before we're anything else, we're humans, right? And, and there's a way as humans that, you know, we like to connect and, you know, we come together and we feed off one another, even introverts, right? It's a misconception. Introverts are not antisocial. They have a certain way that they wish to engage and interact. Correct, exactly. Yeah. And it's not that it's not that they're enthused by what we're not, not enthused by what we're doing. It's that they don't show their enthusiasm in the way that extroverts do. So you have to you have to cater to that, right? So I agree, with you. I agree with you. Now we're getting close to the end of time. So I just want to oh, there's something I really wanted to ask you because you, you know you you've been doing this for a while, like I have in the remote. We've been traversing the world in remote conferences and you know, without even leaving a chair. Uh, and we're both agilists. We've both been involved in the, the, the agile community for a long time. Um, where do you see it going now? You know, we, we, remote is not going away. Thank heavens, because that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but remote's not going away or, or slash hybrid. Where does agility sit in this mix? And it's a question I asked um, um, Lisa Atkins and, and, you know, I've asked Esther and Diana, so I want to ask you your thoughts on it because mm. it's good to, for, for people to hear from different points of view from different parts mm. of the world. No, that's a great question. Um, okay, so for me, right, and again, yeah, I talked a little bit about the article that I wrote on InfoQ, so I'll share a link to that and you, you, know, you can put it out there. So I covered yeah. a lot of my feelings on this stuff in there, but I think... I'd like to see us talking less about agile per se, you know, because sometimes you go in environments and, yep. you know, the A word has certain, you know, preconceptions and connotations. And I think those of us who are practicing for quite some time kind of appreciate that. And I think we have to work with that. So I'm doing a lot of stuff now and I'm coaching teams and all the rest of it, but I don't like to hammer home, you know, the agile bit. Yep. But for me, I think going back to the original manifesto, over the last couple of years and everything that we've talked about, you know, in this conversation, for me, comes back to the original first value, right? So the people interactions of processes and tools, right? And I talk a lot about this because I'm really, really kind of, I guess, passionate and also committed to the fact that it is reminding us of all the good things about, you know, what Agile was originally trying to do, right? And when Alistair and, you know, Ari and, you know, uh, Ron and all these guys got together and, you know, came up with what they did, that is why they did. And I think sometimes over the last 20 years, some of that has got lost in translation and turned into something else. And you know, I don't want to get into all the, you know, the, you know, the different framework really? wars yeah. and method wars and yeah. all that, all that stuff, right? Uh, I'm not going to mention the S word and things because because none of that stuff excites me. Right, it doesn't excite me. It's there, it exists. All these tools and methods offer you something. I'm much more interested in, like we talked earlier about, deliberating structures and the interaction patterns. And how do you truly build world class collaborative teams? And I think we're learning, and that's the focus for me. That that's really where it's all going. Some people aren't quite there, and they're thinking there. And you know, you'll still see people. You know, you'll be environments where you know they're pushing certain methods and frameworks that really in the weeds of, you know, the, the methods and some nuances are in the framework and they think that's the be-all and end-all. And I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter. And context is everything, right? So whatever you're doing, context is king, right? So I used to be in the digital marketing space some years ago and we even talked about that. And that it was never, for a while it was like, well, content is king. Well, no, content's not king. Context is king. And what we do context is absolutely king because it is everything until you deeply understand you know the local challenges you shouldn't be pushing or promoting any solution right and I think we are getting better at it but there's kind of still a long way to go and you know I don't want to start you know um, talking about you know some of the negativity around certain aspects of consultancy but for me it's people and interactions. And that's why I'm, you know, I'm in the space I'm in. That's why I'm passionate about building communities. And my my work is definitely in the people, skills, culture space. Yeah. That's what I do. Day job, and it's what I do in all these other voluntary pursuits that you've talked about. 
I think that's why we, you know, there's a certain group of us that tend to gravitate and find ourselves in the same spaces, like you talked about April or, or Diana or, or Esther, you know, who, who, we, we gravitate in there. And, and you know, I have a, a, a particular line that I use, which is, you know, in a book coming out soon, uh, eventually, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, what we deal in is the collaborative connective tissues, right? Lovely. Organizationally, um, across the world, or even just in your daily, those collaborative connective tissues horizontally and vertically, and how you plug that in across organizations, that, you know, whether they be small or large, that's the that's the lifeblood, the information flow. That's what, you know, agility really offered us. And, and that's why I, I gravitate towards that, because you're right, that first principle, right? And, and even in the heart of agile, and we won't spend too much time on that, but, you know, the collaborator is the one I always gravitate to because if you collaborate better, if you create those collect those connective collaborative tissues across your organisation, then you're going to be able to do the other things. Without it, you're not. No, that's brilliant. Uh, I like what you said there, and I've heard you say that before. It's really good. So you just reminded me of something. So one of the, the initiatives that I lead in my organisation is uh, a community-based initiative, right? And we're creating a global supportive community across our engineer community, of which we are thousands and thousands and thousands across a large global enterprise, right? But I've set out a bunch of principles there around the way we want them to use the technology. And as you know, I'm a real advocate and a practitioner of social leadership, right? So a lot of my talks over 2020, what about social leadership? I've written about that, you know, various articles and spoke about in panels, etc. right? And it's based on the work of Julian Storr, who's also been a past um, speaker at Future Work Scotland, and I love his work, and he's a real thought leader. So I'm really just building on his work and practicing and applying it and putting it into practice, right? But one of the things I talk about a lot as part of this initiative is optimization of the flow of information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that for me... Op that's exactly what I was talking about, you know, that optimization of flow of information is, is exactly what, what in any organization, when you come back to it, root cause is truncation of that information. You know, Esther Derby talks about the bifurcation, you know, the, the people here have all the information and by the time you get here, it's lesser and lesser and lesser. And, and that, that's exactly what we're talking about. So, Seth, it's been awesome to have you on. We are right close to the end of our time. How can people reach out to you? How can they get involved with any of the things we've talked about today? Uh, yeah, great. No, brilliant to be on, by the way. Great to, great to be chatting with you. I love chatting with you. Um, really enjoyed the conversation. So you talked about Future Work Scotland. That's a meetup-based meetup, funnily enough. Mm -hmm. So you'll find us on Meetup. I can share some links. We've got a LinkedIn group. You can search for that. Um, you're welcome to link people. Your audience are welcome to link in with me if they want. I'm always open to connections. Uh, and um, yeah, you'll find our, our Making Community podcast on all the usual channels, you know, if you want to check it out on Google or Spotify or whatnot. I didn't really talk about my work in the British Computer Society. I chair their Agile um, committee. So, you know, if you're interested in, 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 in learning more about what we're doing there, you know, I'll share some links around that. Um, yeah, there's probably other stuff I forgot to mention, but... Um, yeah, Future of Works, yeah, one of my, my main sort of passionate yeah, projects. So, yeah, the will we'll, we'll, we'll take all those things and we'll put them in the show notes. So we'll make sure that people get, get in touch with that as well. You know, it's been fantastic to have you on, all the remote things. If you're listening to this today, please like, subscribe, so we keep this thing going. Talking about communities, Remote AF now has a community. Just go to the remoteaf.co, click on the community button, join us. That's all about remote and hybrid and how we make it better. We'd love to have you in that community. It's starting to you know, get quite vibrant. And Seth, fantastic to have you on all the remote things today. Nice, totally great to be here. Enjoyed the chat.